You married? Uh-oh. -uh. You idiot. No, ma'am, I'm not. It's not surprising for celebrities to live a double life. After all, they're constantly being watched by their fans, so some things should be definitely kept a secret. However, at some point, even that becomes a little too much. Rock Hudson was one of America's sweethearts back in the golden age of Hollywood. Women were obsessed with him, and all men wanted to be him. We all know him as the rough and tough star with the perfect image, but it seems that his life wasn't as perfect as it looked, and his managing team did a great job at hiding it until now. So what was Hudson's life really like, and what happened to make it's so painful. Rock Hudson, who was born Roy Harold Shearer Jr., was just a little boy from Illinois who grew up helping his family around the farm. He learned hard work and what it took to survive from watching his grandparents work their own farm when he was young. And he was always a cutie, but life got harder after his father abandoned him and his mother, leaving the two of them alone. But at least they had each other. And Roy was always grateful for the great mother he had. She was my mother, father, and big sister to me, he said and I was son and brother to her. As Roy had to deal with his feelings of abandonment after his dad left, he also had to deal with an even worse stepdad. His mother remarried, and her second husband, Wallace Fitzgerald, wasn't any better than the first. Even though he adopted Roy and gave him his last name, Fitzgerald, Wallace never liked the guy let alone consider him as his own son, which was why he was so brutal to both him and Roy's mother. He was constantly physically violent to them, especially when Roy would ever speak about his dreams of becoming an actor. Instead of getting support, his stepfather just beat him up. Rock would then later explain that he could never freely say that he was going to be an actor when he grew up, because that was sissy stuff, so he just kept his mouth shut. It was from his early childhood that he experienced this trauma and realized that it wasn't always safe for him to share his feelings and thoughts. So while keeping his dreams a secret, he worked a few jobs during his teen years, including the army, until he finally managed to escape his hometown and go to LA in his 20s. Obviously, he didn't start his acting career as soon as he landed there. He had to work as a delivery man for a dried fruit company for a while. But while he did that job, he'd park outside of big studios hoping someone would notice his great looks and hire him. After a while, his wish did come true, but at what cost? After years of dreaming of becoming a superstar, he was finally scouted by an agent. The Hollywood talent agent, Henry Wilson, admired Roy's looks and his 6'4 height, and we don't blame him. So obviously Roy was happy. What he didn't know was that Henry didn't have the best reputation. Apparently what he did was find young, good-looking men, seduce them, and sign them. He was basically a groomer, and everyone knew Henry was also gay. So Henry did a great job at providing these young and inexperienced men with acting jobs, but they all had to do something to return the favor. It was fairly well known that if you were a Henry Wilson client, as Tony Curtis once expressed it, you probably had to sexually express yourself to Henry. Hudson's biographer, Mark Griffin, said. Wilson's first order of business was turning the young and innocent Roy into the masculine Rock Hudson. Wilson made him change his name, but Rock was probably happy he no longer had to use his stepfather's last name. After changing his name, Wilson controlled Rock's life and career from then on. The next step was changing his image and giving him a makeover, which included new teeth, a wardrobe, more masculine energy, and even vocal lessons. Everything Rock Hudson was, was thanks to Henry Wilson for better or for worse. Rock Hudson's career wasn't great in the beginning since he didn't have any acting experience and he was only hired because of his looks. For his first movie, The Radio Times, Hudson only had one simple line in the whole film, yet it took him 38 times to get it right. But after a lot of practicing and experiencing, he did manage to score a role in the 1956 film Giant alongside Elizabeth Taylor and James Dean. This was one of his biggest hits, and it even won him an Oscar nomination for Best Actor. So it's safe to say his acting definitely became better with time. Even though Henry Wilson was the one who raised his career from the ground, at some point he became the reason why he wasn't getting any movie parts. Wilson's reputation became so bad because of his alcoholism and the rumors of his grooming. Apparently, Rock always wanted to fire him and couldn't stand him, but he couldn't. And when his ex-boyfriend asked him why he wouldn't fire him, he replied with, I can't fire him because he threatened to have one of his boys throw acid in my face if I ever fired him, and I knew he would do it. But by 1966, having Wilson by his side became unbearable, and Hudson finally fired him. Wilson's life went downhill from there, and Hudson's life wasn't going that well either. <laughs> 
while there might have always been rumors regarding Hudson's sexuality, no one really believed he could be gay. He was Hollywood's sweetheart, and his agents always did the most to hide any sign that he was gay. Oh, and all the women in America were in love with him. Rock's great looks and his female fan base were one of the main reasons he was so popular. So if he didn't have all these fans obsessed with him, his career would probably fall apart. Long before he landed in Hollywood, he understood that if he wanted to be accepted, the very essence of who he was would have to be edited out of the frame, his biographer Mark said. His agents even went as far as making him get into an arranged marriage to really make sure no one suspected anything. Hudson was still single at the age of 29, and that made everyone confused. He had it all, so how come he still hadn't gotten married? Well, this is where Phyllis Gates came in. She was Hudson's secretary, and in 1955, the two of them got married. That was quite the cliche, him marrying his secretary out of everyone, but it did stop the gay rumors for a while. They got divorced, and Rock never remarried. But that didn't mean he didn't want to. He just never got the chance because the one he loved was a man, and that man was Lee Garlington. They dated through 1965, and this relationship definitely required a lot of work. They had to sneak around at night. Lee had to leave his house before the sun even rose and try to keep the car engine quiet so no one noticed him there. And when they went to events together, they had to get some fake girlfriends on their arms so no one would suspect anything. It was all going well until a fan broke into Rock's house one day. That's when he became extra paranoid, since he would always keep pictures of Lee on his bedside table. And if someone found them, it would all go downhill. All of these difficulties led to the end of their relationship. Neither of them could go on like that in secret, and it killed them that they couldn't live life the way they wanted to. I wish he had been born 30 or 40 years later, Garlington said. He'd be more relaxed and at ease, and it would have been a happier life. He'd also be elated by how much has changed. Hudson spent most of his life hiding who he really was, and he lost his one true love because of it. He had his family, he had his professional life, and he had his private life, and he had to portray a different person in each of those realms. His adopted sister, Alice Wire, said about Rock, trying to please everyone but himself. He was a great performer, not only in acting, but throughout his entire life. At least Rock got to share his truth and finally come out of the closet during the end of his life. Rock Hudson lived with health issues throughout his life. He was a heavy drinker and smoker, so that eventually caught up to him. At some point, it even became a problem and interfered with his career. There are many shows that he had to cancel because he couldn't go on with filming. Once, he had a heart attack and had to go through quintuple bypass surgery while starring in The Devlin Connection. After he recovered from surgery, the fans had already lost interest in the show, so there was no point in continuing it. In May of 1984, he attended a dinner at the White House, where everyone noticed how ill he looked. But Hudson only claimed he was sick from a bug he'd caught on set. But only a few years after that, he got the results that he was HIV positive. At that time, people thought that only gay people could have that sexually transmitted disease, which means that if he told anyone about his illness, everyone would know he was gay. So he kept it a secret for a while and only told a few of his previous partners. He still kept working and tried to find a cure for it at the same time. But it was when he was a part of the show Dynasty that his health started declining severely. He lost a lot of weight and his speech was beginning to suffer as well. So he had to be let off the show. But after he collapsed, after a trip to France in 1985, the fans were deeply concerned. Everyone knew it wasn't just the flu anymore. Even at this point, his team tried to hide his real illness and claimed that he had liver cancer. However, since it was almost the end of Hudson's life, he finally decided to come clean about everything. What was the point of lying anymore? Hudson released an announcement that he had AIDS. And even though he didn't state the fact that he was gay, it was made pretty obvious. He expected a lot more hate and backlash, but to his surprise, he faced a lot of love and support from his fans and colleagues. I am not happy that I am sick. I am not happy that I have AIDS, but if that is helping others, I can at least know that my own misfortune has had some positive worth," Hudson said in a statement. And then just a few weeks later, on October 2, 1985, Hudson died at the age of 59. It was extremely heartbreaking that Hudson had to hide who he really was until the last moments of his life. But at least sharing his story about AIDS helped bring awareness about the AIDS epidemic, and it was finally being given the proper attention it needed. Hudson's life was difficult ever since he was a child. He had to go through abandonment, a violent stepfather, and being groomed by his own agent. And he had to hide behind his fake persona his entire life. He was so popular, yet everyone failed to notice the real him. But at least now, years after his death, he's still being talked about. And everyone admires him for being one of the first celebrities to publicly share that he had AIDS and that he was gay. If you liked this video, make sure to watch this other one.